Okay, so in example two, we have a similar situation that we had to where we were working with a series of if statements. The difference is now we have the if statement followed by another keyword in the language called else. So the first thing that I want to say is when you're dealing with else, you, the if statement is still one single statement and the else is part of that statement. So this whole section that I have highlighted here is one statement. And the reason that it's thought of and is one statement is because the if else is a situation where you can only hit one block of these two blocks. So I have this set up as basically a two scenario situation. There's only two possible scenarios. Um, so it, as you can see in this top one, I'm, I've asked the person to input a number and the only two possible scenarios are the number is positive or the number is negative. So there's no integer that I can come up with that is not positive or negative. It's got to be one or the other. For that reason, I can say um, if the input integer is greater than or equal to zero, then enter the if statement just like before and, s and say the number is positive. The difference now is that I can say, well, I also want to do something if the condition w was false. So this block of code here will get executed if the condition was true, but this block of code will get executed if the condition was false. So that provide, that's what the else provides you with. The else provides you with the ability to execute code when the first condition was not hit. So something will always happen here, always. It will either be one of those two. It will either enter the first block or the second block, depending on whether or not the, the condition was true or false. The else, think of the else as uh, a kind of thing sitting at the end of the if statement that will catch uh, a default value if everything else didn't succeed. So we'll see more in the next example when we have chains of if else ifs, but for now with just an if else it's basically two, two scenarios either true or false based on the condition. So let's just debug through this to see it. So it's going to ask me for a number again. And I'm going to put in the number 22. So this condition, 22 is greater than or equal to 0, is true. So it's going to enter here, just like a normal if statement. And then when we hit the end of the if statement, since we entered the if statement, it will completely skip over the else. The else is only used when the condition was false. So you'll notice the next line of code will be line 20. Now here's another if else statement. And this one is checking to see if we have a single digit number or a multiple digit number. Again, this is a two scenario situation. It's either one case or the other case. Uh, so if my number is between negative nine and positive nine, then there's only one digit. So in this case, 22 is greater than or equal to negative nine, but it is not less than nine. So since 22 is not less than nine, this whole statement is false and it's not going to hit line 21 at all. So 21, 22, and 23 will be completely skipped over and it will, the next line of code will be line 24, the else, or line 25, the begin of the else. And now we're going to enter the else block and we're going to say the number has multiple digits. So we can see the number is positive, the number has multiple digits, and those were the two blocks that I hit. So for a different permutation of this same exact program, um, last time we used a positive number and, um, and multiple digits, so let's try an, a single digit negative number and see what happens. So I'll say negative five. Oops, I forgot to set my breakpoint, but you can see it says the number is negative, the number is single digit. So let's see why I did that. So breakpoint here, negative five. So the first condition says, is negative five greater than or equal to zero? So that's false. So it's going to skip over 12, 13, and 14. 
And remember, every time the first condition is false, the else, it skips over to the else, and the else is always true if the condition was false. So the else doesn't rely on some condition. It simply gets hit always based on the fact that the condition in the if statement was false. So here we go, we're inside the else, and we say the number is negative. And we get down here to line 20, and it says if input integer is greater than or equal to 9, so negative 5 is greater than or equal to 9, and negative 5 is less than or equal to 9. So this whole expression is true. So we should come in here and see the number is single digit. And when we hit the end of the if statement, it's going to completely skip 24, 25, 26, and 27 because, like I said, you can only hit one block of the if statement. So that's pretty much it. And the key here for all of this is you can only hit one block per if statement. That's going to be important in the next uh, section when we get into if, else, if. Try to visualize every if statement as a big chain of conditions and you can only hit one block and when I say block that means a, a matching pair of begins and ends per if statement so I, I won't be able to have that and that happen at the same time line 13 and line 17 will not both be executed it's, it's one or the other same thing down here for this if statement only the if block or the else block will get executed one of them absolutely will get executed because the else is the inverse of the if. If the condition is true, it'll hit the first block. If it's false, it'll hit the second block. So line 22 or line 26 will certainly be executed, but not both, one or the other. And that's pretty much it for if else. It's really not too much different than the if statement, other than you have code that can be executed when the condition is false. And just make sure you keep visualizing every if statement as its own thing and look at it all by itself. Kind of ignore everything else. Um, I'm not sure if it helps, but you can, if you really want to, you can create regions. You can say, like, first conditional, or I'll call it first decision. And you put end region. So the, what regions enable you to do is, if you want, you can kind of just like close it up so you don't have to look at it anymore. So I could put a region down here. Second, this, oops. Region, second, decision. So now I can close that up. So I didn't I didn't change my code at all actually I just made it uh, I gave myself the ability to just look at one at a time of these things so there's the first if statement there's the second if statement so that can be useful if your code is getting cluttered and you want to just be able to kind of hide some of it and focus on one at one piece at a time uh, I usually don't use regions but it just occurred to me that you might want to do that so that's all so the next the next video we're going to be going into more complicated versions. So it started with just single if statements, either decide whether to do this or not. And with the else statement, now we have the ability to say, do one thing or the other thing based on the condition. Definitely do one of them, but do one or the other based on whether the condition is true or false. And with the final construct, the if, else, if, we're going to be able to do pretty much anything we want. So. We'll see that in the next video.